Good Work Show. This year's Good Work Show. Oh, that's right. Yes, happy this 2020. Decades Good Work Show. But that's arguable. Because that is arguable. A You're lot right. of people say that it doesn't start until 2021. <laughs> So apparently there's not a there's consensus a, in the room either. I, it, when, I, I saw somebody do an explanation. I was like, this explanation is too hard. I don't even want to read anymore. Why do you, I don't really you care say what that decade it is. It's just too hard. It was too much to read because he went into the thing about why the decade so here's starts what, on I, the first and I then the thing. I was like, this is too much explanation. But I don't care. Well, I mean, I for the people who are going to say it's the next decade in 2021, I wonder well, what's going to happen with those people just, who are going to be like, you're So late. this is what you should do. Hold on to this I think episode. You have to put your, I think you have to put it on your profile picture. I'm 2020. I'm, like a 2020 a, I'm a 2021. Decade. I'm a 2021. Because if you say it next year, people are going to be like, what They're are They're going to look at you about? like it's over. We don't care anymore. Yeah. It's kind of like when the new, to like, did the new millennium start in 2000 or 2001? It never started but quite because honest, all my stuff is still working. Exactly. <laughs> but here's my thing. If you were that person that was holding out for 2001, like, it passed you. Like, we're over it. Yeah. 2000 happened, and we celebrate zeros. Like, let's just be honest. You yeah. celebrate zeros. Yeah. So, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm turning 41. No. Who does that? <laughs> Oh no! That's somebody, what I'm saying. Somebody like, might. If you if you barely made it out of forty, you are well, celebrating no, forty one. Like, like it's 1999. That's true. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. What? Now to that point. What you celebrate like it's 1999, not 2000, because it's going into 2000. Uh uh-uh, uh But you start. It's at the start of 1999. Yeah. Well. Here's you the thing. party like it's 1990. So when it turned, because that song was on when it was 1999, not on. That was my class song. Okay, well that's yeah, but but but, but what, did did people play? Well, I, they might have played it on December 31st. Oh, I'm sure they did. Because that was a whole. Point but I of bet this. you they played it on January 1st. Yeah, 1999 too. Well, that was the whole point of the song. Like the whole thing was, well, like, was like, oh, the, the world's gonna end. Yeah, yeah the world's gonna but end. So we had to party like it. People was... played it when it was just starting. I though. mean, let's be honest. I played it like last week. <laughs> so <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I was like, well, yeah. I don't know. So, but you yes, could, to you your could point, do the nines, or you could, but you know, but nobody celebrates. I guess. Okay, so yes. So, so you can celebrate the, the nineties or the eighties. You do the. You started on the Eight zero on the zero, right to the nine. And then you start the next one on the zero. Yeah. So like well, on the show on the CNN shows, do they do they do it on the nine or the zero? The they start at the they like the seventies, but I don't. They feel, go from nineteen seventy to nineteen seventy nine. Okay, well then because you got to go at nineteen eighty. It's the eighties. I mean, I agree, but I'm saying the technical people were on there. Oh, saying I'm sure because it it's not ten years; it's nine years, theoretically. But if you count the zero, wouldn't it be ten? I don't know. I feel I'm like the here. zero was on the front and not on the back. I'm not here for the math. That's, I just, I, that, that's why I said I wasn't I stand on, it was by too my difficult. original statement of, I don't care. Well, you're the one brought up the decade. <laughs> so we got that's on true. this. I was, because I, I, well, I wasn't I even I, on the new year. I was just like, welcome to this week's show. I know, but I guess I, like, I got to take it by weeks, not by, I guess my, I'm by a, decades. That's too much. I'm a zero person like, then. Let's start from the small part. <laughs> right now, it right is, here. what time is it? What minute are we what on? What month is it? So I've decided that, um, right. we. I was talking to somebody earlier today. I've decided that, you know, people talk about like you ramp up for the new year. And, and you you're ramp like, up, like kind of you like you ramp, you get back into oh, it after, after the off. holiday or whatever. I'm giving myself till February. Like I'm well, gonna get you through January. Look for another job. I'm gonna <laughs> your ramp up need to be a little no, bit quicker. I'm doing stuff. I'm going. You know, I'm doing you to the ramp things up a little bit faster. We'll need 30, 31 just, days to ramp it up. You don't think? Uh-uh. It's hard, man. No, <laughs> I think I, I think just you don't get a cool feel, three days. But after the third, what? you got to be back in the. I don't swing. necessarily mean like doing stuff, but I feel like it doesn't. It doesn't feel natural yet. Like you know, before even I was okay. So here's one thing: Mm-mm. I was I'm looking sure for my phone charger in my car, and I was like, "Oh, I took my phone charger out because when I was traveling, it's like my travel cord." and it's still kind of with my travel stuff somewhere. I'm like, I don't feel like all of my. St- I don't hmm. feel reacclimated yet. 
Sounds like a PP. <laughs> oh, it totally is. But I'm giving myself until February to be like, okay, That's put the cord problem for anybody who yes. doesn't know the PP. I'm like, put the cord back in the car, like See? because you're not traveling again. Because that's what yeah, the you're thing. supposed I took to it out. put stuff back where you got it from. I know, and I left. I left it out because I'm like, well, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it was just like, well, I'll be well, here because you little. weren't driving, right? And I'm like, and I won't be here that long, and then I'll be gone again. So now it's like I don't really have anywhere to go, so I need to put stuff. How many charger cords do you have? Because I feel like Lots. you should have more than one. I do have a lot. Yeah, but why? No, why I have do you more have, than one. Like, I have a car one. I have a downstairs I do, on the but couch when I one. Travel, I have a downstairs extra one. I, I have, have the one by my bed. Yes. I have the one at work. But I have, when I travel, though, so I have the one by the bed that I usually plug my phone into, but I don't charge my iPad by the bed. So okay. I've got the sofa one, the bed one, the car one, a spare for something else. But when I travel, the car one becomes the iPod, mm, the you iPad have a travel. One. I know. That's what and it then is. I've got the super long one, like the twelve foot one. Yeah, that one. That's key to yeah. o- overall joy. That's and the happiness. one I have by my bed because just in case it will use my phone, over. Bed, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta be able to go all the way over there with the phone. I have, I realized that there's a lot when I traveled. I was like, oh gosh, I have to plug in my phone, my iPad, my watch. My well, Apple's gonna come out with the, the they charge need the thing. thing. They need the pad so that I can just throw all my stuff on it and it can. No, char- I think it's gonna be like you can charge the phone like Samsung has, where you charge it off the other device. Oh, like you just touch well, it. Well, that's this a rumor, but I feel like you should be able to charge your watch off your phone at this point. I I, I would agree with you, like but you like just the number of chargers and, and then of- trying to find plugs for all the stuff yeah. like that's the other thing it's like well what plug am i going to plug this into because at home i've got the power strip in the mm-hmm. in the nightstand so everything just gets plugged in my daughter has a really neat invention for all of this i can't tell you what it is because she needs to she get needs, on the ball. shouldn't have it patented or made up or she doesn't know anybody technology related so <laughs> she needs to go find a scientist to build this technology but if she can make this up i'm telling you i'm rich <laughs> I'm rich. I feel like she I feel would like disagree. if she's rich, I'm rich. I agree with Did that. Did I let, let her live in my house for all this time? Yes. <laughs> Without rent? Yes. I feel like that's payback. Like after a certain fair. time when you're a parent, it it everything flips back. That's that's true. So Well, I always, you know, if I win the lottery, I know like, <laughs> right. like if I win the lottery, I got two phone calls to make. It's like, you know, I'm not calling anybody. Well, I'm calling people to get my life together before I tell real people. Well, yeah, but I'm not calling anybody I know. I'm calling, I'm calling a strong arm somebody. I'm calling, I'm lawyering up. I'm lawyering up. I need a lawyer. First, I'm not, I'm not even calling John. I'm I'm like, that might be the person I call first. Uh -uh, He's cut off. Really? No, he's not a, I'd like, if I win like 300 million, you think I'm going to call Morgan Stanley? Wow. (laughs) No. No, not John wow, Floyd. Not John <laughs> Floyd. No, wow. I feel like you gotta have you gotta have some like the like you know, you gotta have like Obama and Oprah level like guys. That maybe I'll, I'll just point. see what but then once ha- what'll happen is it's not like I'm dissing him because I'll just give him all the money that was left. Cause that's just like at that point, that's just play around change. money. <laughs> it's like you can have that's all, just play around all money. of my retirement money that was in there. Thanks. We could still I, be friends. We could be friends. After I don't I change my I, identity. I really do, I don't know that you could still be friends. Well, he got over. He got well, all that true. money for free. He I, didn't even um, have to do anything. That's true. I um yeah, I would call Shout a lawyer first. <laughs> I was gonna call you, but you know. Yeah. Um, I definitely oh. call a lawyer. Yeah. I, would, I would keep coming to work or I would use up. No, I would mm-hmm. come to work. No, I, I would come to work I would take until all my all, vacation. No, and but do all my all, do- so my... would have to be in a row. Mm-mm. I'm taking vacation. Because if I all of a sudden called you and was like, I'm not coming in for a week, you'd be like, that's weird. I had a, I have a personal emergency for the next three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm never coming back again. And I'm sorry because you might be on your way to work and get in a car accident. It would be awful. <laughs> Could you then, imagine? Right. And you had that ticket? Oh, no, no, no. Not I'm saying everything. Sh- <laughs> I would I'm gonna um, go catch my as soon like I need to, you know, on like the movie lottery ticket where he lost the ticket. Uh-uh, I'm strapping that oh, thing no, on. That would it's go into be a like, safe deposit. Take to, my, box. take to my side. Nobody will know. 
Or and I put it in the plate, like somebody brought, um, I'm not putting a safe deposit box. You know how many, if you go in the safe deposit box and put a lottery ticket in there, you think the people at the bank are going to steal gonna it? see what it is. They're like, uh, where would you put it? Like for me, I guess you got to strap it to your side. You got to put some packing tape, put see, it in I an envelope, put, it, and put and some s- packing tape and then I'd and like, tape it, duct tape to, to yourself. I don't trust that either. Okay. So I'm we've got guests you. today. So we should we tell, do. they have nothing to do with the lottery or anything that we were talking about. <laughs> Except that if we won the lottery, you could make a donation to any one of these organizations to support their mission. Or if you just had an extra dollar. (laughs) Because you don't have to win the lottery. You don't have to win the lottery. They could use some donations. Yes. So Adrienne Tisdale from Scone Years Homeless Preventive Organization. Um, She's the executive director of the Rockdale Division. She's going to come on and talk about the work that they're doing and the new shelter that they're trying to put together that's in Riverdale. And they definitely need some resources and help to do that. So tackling one of our area's um, biggest issues, which is homelessness. So we'll hear from her after the break. And then um, Melissa Earhart, who is the executive director of Atlanta Hospital Hospitality House, is going to come on and talk about (laughs) um, talk about their organization and how they are helping people who um, are coming to our area or are live in our area and are facing medical challenges and need to be in and out of the hospital for one reason or another and need somewhere to stay or their family members need somewhere to stay. So, um, so definitely everybody can probably identify with having either been in the hospital or having a family member who's there and you need somewhere to sleep or stay or just rest your head outside of the waiting room or that reclinable sometimes chair (laughs) that's in the hospital room that is not very comfortable at all right so anyway so excited to have both of these ladies on to kick off the new year here with us with the good work show we're excited to be back we hope you enjoyed our favorite guest from last year but we're excited to come bring yeah we're just excited so we're gonna party like it's nineteen nine. Somebody's gonna be like, let's party till it's two thousand, like it's two thousand twenty one. What's the next one? What's the next? Um, I guess it's twenty thirty two two. I know, but twenty. You're listening to the Good Work Show. <laughs> To learn more about the show and how your company can tell their story, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Good Work Show. Audience, welcome back to the Good Work Show. We are excited to be sitting with Adrian Tisdale, and she is the executive director of the Rockdale Division of Sconiers Homeless Preventive Organization, Inc., Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, so definitely a mouthful with the name of the organization, but I want you to tell me um, and tell us all about the organization and your mission. Well, right now, the organization, we've always done work with the homeless population. We've always done that, but we were not able to secure any facilities previously to house a large number of homeless individuals, particularly veterans. And we were lucky enough to get a um, four buildings down in Riverdale by which we're trying to renovate. And it will give us 64 beds where we can house individuals. And so in that environment, they'll have their own space. It's two um, people to a room. And we also feed them three meals a day. So they don't have to cook. They don't have to do anything except for the fact that, of course, of course, they have to adhere to the policy of what we have. They have restrictions, of course, of deadline times that they have to be in, that sort of thing. But it's something that we really, really need to do because it seems like the homeless is exploding. And I tell everybody, homelessness is a paycheck away. That means that you have a lot of people that work every day, mm-hmm. and they don't really make a lot of money. And if they miss a paycheck, then they can become homeless. Or if they lose their job, they can become homeless. And so we're finding that the homeless population is not just people think, oh, it's just some bum on the street or this person. And it's not. Sometimes it's entire families that's actually living in their car to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have to look at that. And we're asking for help from the consumers to help us to really house them. And I know a lot of times people, you know, will say, well, We don't want, you know, any of these housing in our community. You don't want homeless living next door to you. 
But I always tell people that you cannot just displace an entire class of people or a population. We who are doing better must help those who are not. Mm-hmm. And so that's very, very important to us, and that's a project that we're working on. And like I said, we were lucky enough to secure four buildings, but the buildings are not in great shape. They're in terrible shape. And so we need donations, and we need various different things. We need volunteers to help paint, to help clean up, and do various different things to the building so we can start housing these individuals. And one of the things with the veterans, which we didn't know previously, You have a lot of veterans that have benefits and they have money. Mm -hmm. The problem is they don't have an address. And if they don't have an address, the Veterans Administration will not give them their money. Mm -hmm. So they need to be able to get secured in a location so you can get them to the journey of not being homeless by giving them an address to start out with, giving them responsibilities so they can graduate from there. And then you have people that we've placed in beds And then they wind up going into their own apartment. Um, The program also helps them with job placements. We have training. We have education. We also do, and one of my backgrounds is I do mortgages. And so we actually help them get into a mortgage for a permanent um, solution to their problems. Okay, that's wonderful. So let's break down a little bit about um, kind of what you're doing and how people connect with you now. So the program, so the buildings that you've secured now, these are, is this the first time that the organization has been able to actually house people as a part of your mission? Yes. This is the first time we've been able to house them. Any other time we've been able to place them, but in other people's facilities. Gotcha. Like we would call mm-hmm. around to various different shelters and, you know, people would call us and then we would place them in this bed or that bed. But what we've been finding out is that when we call around, beds are not available. Mm. So if someone calls us and if there's no bed available, we can't help them. So the next step for us was to secure our own location where we know that we will have beds. And then once that's filled up, we can move to another location to secure that. So we're steadily looking for various different places that we can secure. And with the help of individuals and consumers, that we can continue to do this and to place people in, you know, in safe housing. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you mentioned, Adrian, um, about was getting them to sort of be active in being responsible for Mm -hmm. things. So tell me a little bit about how that looks. What what does that mean? I know you mentioned job placement and employment. Mm -hmm. Uh, How do you, you know, get those folks that you are helping to be active in their sort of turnaround process? Well, people that are homeless, they have to be acclimated back into pretty much society of doing things. If they're homeless, they're like, they're not doing anything, they're on the street. So they have to be acclimated back into learning how to do what they're supposed to do to take care of themselves. Um, And it can start out simply with we have them, you know, they have household duties like cleaning up behind themselves, taking care of themselves, taking care of their area so If, in fact, they have half of the room that has to be maintained, they have to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning. We do not allow them to just sleep all day. You have to get up. You have to be part of a program that you're going out to where people are actually coming in, taking them out to various different programs. You can be working a job or you can be in an education program, a training program, or you're going to be active doing things within the house. And working with that, we also, like I said, we cook for them, and it's three meals a day. So we might have some of them, you know, working in the kitchen, helping with that, Mm -hmm. you know, doing various different tasks to bring them up to the level where they need to be able to take care of themselves eventually. So once we get them to that place and they feel like they can take care of themselves, they also go through case management. Mm -hmm. So it's not simply... Okay, I can take care of myself right now. We follow them through case management. At this facility that we're doing in Riverdale is really, really close to my heart because we're also going to have a medical clinic there. We're going to have doctors and nurses come there. And that way, people that are on medication, that's supposed Mm -hmm. to be taking medicine, they will be able to go to the clinic to make sure the medicine is dispersed, getting people regulated. Because when they come in, each person will have a physical We do screening, and we will do screening for tox, whether they're on drugs 
or whether they're HIV positive or if they have anything else wrong with them, that we can assist and get them back on the right track where they're not having to pay for all of that because a lot of them haven't been to the doctor probably in years. So we need to know what their status is so we can properly help them. So, Adrian, you mentioned that the um, buildings that you secured, that they're not quite ready yet. So Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what you need and how our listeners can be able, can help you kind of get Mm -hmm. everything up and running, because I'm sure that you'd like to have that happen sooner rather than later. Yes, we would love for it to happen. We have Mm -hmm. people now calling us that's on a waiting list to get into the facilities. We need volunteers to help paint the building. We need sheetrock, we need paint, we need all of those different things. We've called around, um, we're trying to work with Home Depot, believe it or not, Home Depot is saying that they're going to help us get some things that we need to help do the repairs in the building as well. Um, We're asking people to donate. They can go to our website and they can actually donate by going to our website, which is www.shpoinc.com. And then they can click on the Veterans Project, and it will show them a link where they can actually donate money to the project to help with the assistance of doing the cleanup work, that sort of type thing, because we have to put floors down. Also, um, Bangkok, believe it or not, Bangkok Furniture, they said they would donate two beds to us. Mm. So we're asking people to come forth, businesses as well, if you can come forth and help us. We have 64 beds that we need to get up and running. And we need to make this comfortable because I want it to be, when you go into a shelter, what I don't like to see is beds stacked up on top of beds where people are so close to each other they can't hardly breathe. Mm -hmm. It needs to be where a place that I would go and sleep myself or I would send a family member to sleep myself. It needs to be something where it's giving homeless individual, uh, you know, a set of pride and dignity that they're in a place that they can keep clean and maintain. And they're not just being thrown in to the stacks of places for them. So we're really, really hoping and praying with the Lord's help that we can get people to actually donate and to come help support us. Um, we have some pictures on our website that will actually show you the condition of what the property is like now. And we're trying to get the property cleaned out, up and running, so then we can get them in as soon as possible. Okay. So, Adrian, we are coming toward the end of our segment here. We've got about two minutes left. Um, So, uh, but just tell us, is the shelter now, obviously, once you get it operational and you get Mm -hmm. everything in there, you're located in Rockdale. Um, the, the shelters the in sh- Riverdale. The shelters in Riverdale, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. So, is it um, is it serving folks who are in R- it, in, in Riverdale, Clayton County area, or are they uh, where? What is part of town? Okay, it's in Riverdale, but we do not make any of our locations exclusive to any specific okay. county because we're located. The Rockdale division is in Rockdale. Mm-hmm. If we have individuals that are in Rockdale, in DeKalb, Lithonia, wherever they're located, if they need a bed and they're homeless, what we're going to do is transport them okay. to that particular location. So we want to make sure that we get people off the street and we're not just saying, well, okay, it's only Riverdale people. Because we're also trying to secure a location down in Covington. And that particular facility, if we can secure it and raise the money to get it, will house a thousand people. Wow. 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 Okay. And so that one is going to be really, really great. And matter of fact, um, I'm going to kind of turn it into like a cruise ship. So it's going to look like the rooms are going to look pretty much like if you were on a cruise, mm-hmm. that's the size of those compartments for individuals to be in. But we'll be able to house about a thousand people in that particular building because the building is huge. Right. So we're trying to make it so it's, it's really a nice place for people to all right. Well, we've been speaking with Adrienne Tisdale. She is the executive director of the Rockdale Division mm-hmm. of Sconiers Homeless Preventive Organization, Inc. Um, and just really, really quickly, the website is SP. It's www.shpoinc.com. And our phone number is 470-474-1075. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on The Good Work Show. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys allowing us to come. Absolutely. You're listening to The Good Work Show. To learn more about the show and how your company can tell their story, 
like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at Good Work Show. Audience, welcome back to the Good Work Show. We are excited to be sitting here with Melissa. Earhart, who is the executive director of the Atlanta Hospital Hospitality House. That's a lot of H's. It's a lot of H's. <laughs> it's a do you do a H H H? We say ah. Ah, okay. I like ah. Uh. Right. Like, uh. it's, it's easier. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so so tell us about ah. Uh. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Atlanta Hospital Hospitality House is a home to serve people that do not live in Atlanta that are coming into the city for medical purposes. Mm. So our only requirement is that they live 40 miles outside of the city and that they are coming in for one of the hospitals. And so we see people who are coming in for chemo treatments or a car accident or a heart attack. Um, you name it, they're walking through our doors. Oh, OK. So talk to us a little bit about um so you said that you had to live 40 miles outside mm-hmm. of the city. So one of the things that I would imagine is that, so we're not going into politics, but a little bit. So with the closing of a lot of rural hospitals, yep. that the people are having to travel mm-hmm. in order to get medical care. So how does that affect you, what you're doing? Yeah, since 2010, there have been 10 rural hospitals that have closed within mm-hmm. the Southeast. And mm-hmm. so people don't have a choice. It's creating mm-hmm. medical deserts for them. Um, if they don't go to the biggest city, then they could die. Um, and also Atlanta is just blessed to have great medical care, medical mm-hmm. facilities. And so people are wanting to come here for their chemo treatment or their selective treatments because of the, the, what we're able to offer. Yeah. And so just along those lines, though, there are just through um, one of the guests that we have on the show and some work doing with the the March of Dimes and just knowing that there, you can't have a baby in probably half of the the um, counties in the state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. So do you also, are you seeing mothers who are coming mm-hmm. in and coming in families who mm-hmm. are coming in, they are looking for a birthing hospital because they might not have one near their home anymore. Absolutely. Yeah, so, or, or and, at all. And imagine like going into labor on the road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, anybody who's been in labor knows how crazy that could be. Yeah. And so, but yeah. they're, they're forced to come in. I had a family recently that was coming in. Uh, she gave birth at Emory Midtown and... Um, I mean, she just, their their home was a good hour, hour and a half oh away. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Mm-hmm. wow. And I could imagine, especially like me, I was a, um, I was a jaundice baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a little cooking to do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my mother was like, I'm not leaving the hospital without my baby. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but we lived like 10 minutes from the hospital, so not a big deal. But if there's any kind of complications, mm-hmm. um, having a place that you can go to and, be comfortable if you have to, if you have an unexpected extended stay. Especially if you think about it. So a caregiver doesn't want to leave their patient Mm -hmm. and they're often not thinking of themselves. They're caring for their patient. Uh, So what we love to do is care for the caregiver in that sense of, hey, when's the last time you took a shower? When's the last time you ate something? Because you have to think long term if you're going to be able to take care of your patient. Mm -hmm. So this is, so the Atlanta Hospital Hospitality House is for the family members or those who are there to support, is it do, it's not like a transition for the patient who is, or, or is it just kind of tell us like who, mm-hmm. who goes there and, um, and then maybe the length of time too that you, cause I, I'm pretty sure it varies based on, mm-hmm. you know, what their loved one needs and how long they need to be in the hospital. And I guess even the treatment that they might be getting mm-hmm. too. So we do serve um, patients that need to be near the hospital if they're going in and out for chemo treatment or if they have to be near the hospital for a certain amount of time. Um, Probably we're serving 40 percent patients Mm -hmm. and maybe 60 percent caregivers and family members. Um, And guests are coming in and they're staying for a night to a week to six months, um, nine months. We don't have a time limit on how long they can stay. And um, it really just depends on the situation and how how difficult it is or what the doctor's orders are. Um, I mean, you're hearing story after story as they're walking into our, our house. And we know that everybody who is there does not want to be there. Yeah. That's right. the reality. Yeah. Um, so we, we want to make it as homey as possible and as welcoming as possible for each person that comes in and just get to be a tiny part of their story. Mm-hmm. So tell us about what that experience is. So it's a house, mm-hmm. it's a big house, I'm mm-hmm. assuming mm-hmm. <laughs> serving a lot of different people. So what, what services are people getting while they're there? 
So we offer an affordable lodging. So but that's not just what we do. So it's okay. a beautiful home, 10 bedrooms um, in the Druid Hills neighborhood. And so they can come in. Our prices are from $25 to $90. And we charge based on privacy. Hmm. And then we will also work on work with guests that can't afford those fees. And so um, especially if you're thinking long term, the average American is not prepared for a medical crisis. Mm-hmm. Like, and so... I know I wouldn't be. <laughs> um, so they can come in and they get affordable place to stay um, in a beautiful mansion in an, a serene forest. And so that's that's a part of it. They can leave the hospital walls and they can go for a walk and enjoy the nature and breathe, take a cup of coffee outside. Um, that's part of it. Um, but also our staff is very um, centered with um, a heart of compassion. And so they can walk in and get hugs. They can get prayer if they want prayer. We are not a Christian organization, mm-hmm. but we as staff are all believers, and so we we love people well. Um, in in the midst of that, we view it as our ministry, and so they they also get a warm meal, a home cooked meal every night. Mm-hmm. So instead of running through McDonald's or eating mm-hmm. hospital cafeteria food, they get to come home to a home cooked meal, and either the staff will cook that, or we try and get volunteers in to cook that. Um, but then I think the biggest part of what we offer is the community aspect, mm-hmm. and so. Again, everyone who is there is in the same boat, so to speak, and they they become friends. Um, Some of them will support each other through a chemo treatment or go to a a procedure with with another. And it's beautiful to me to see them sitting around the dinner table and seeing that community taking place and them laughing and continuing to stay in touch after they leave there. Mm -hmm. So how did this all come about? How Mm -hmm. did you come up with the or whoever came up with the concept (laughs) of the, the house? I mean, I think. Obviously, there's a need, and we we've heard. Um, I think we've even had, um, you know, Ronald McDonald House on the show yeah. once before, and he just kind of he puts me in the mind of the concept of yeah. of what that um, organization is all about. But how did all of this come about? So, a group of ladies at All Saints Episcopal Church mm-hmm. started this in 1979. They saw that there was a need at Emory Midtown, which was then Crawford mm-hmm. Long, mm-hmm. Uh, for cardiac patients to stay closer to the hospital. And so they created the organization, and then in 1981, we started renting the current house that we're in okay. for a dollar a year for rent. Hmm. So not too bad, yeah, that's not but bad. not too shabby, right? right. But we, um, we're very similar to the Ronald McDonald House. Mm-hmm. Um, we do overflow for them. We have a great partnership, okay. but we, are, we serve all ages, whereas they are just mm-hmm. children patients. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of cover everybody else that doesn't fit into that. Wow. Nice. So we need more of people to rent their property for a dollar. Mm-hmm. Yes, because <laughs> so, you've got ten rooms, right. but we have how many hospitals in mm-hmm. Atlanta, and how I mean the need probably I'm sure outweighs the Absolutely. resources that mm-hmm. you have there. Yeah, we are turning away people constantly, mm-hmm. and um, we serve every hospital in Atlanta. Wow, and so. Uh, on those days when I know that there's there are empty rooms, I know that there's people in need sleeping in their cars, yeah. sleeping in a waiting room, um, just trying to figure out how to reach them. And, and so, then an uncomfortable chair. In exactly. The, in the room. Everybody who's <laughs> in the hospital knows that you and don't sleep cold. well. Why is always it? I mean, cold. it's always. Yeah. I mean, I understand that there probably is a temperature thing mm. with the the you know germs and you know, but I'm like, it is freezing in the hospital. Like I, anytime yeah. I have to go to the hospital, I'll yeah. just wait. <laughs> Put on extra layers. Mm-hmm. And I believe that hospital staff walks in, they wait until you fall asleep and then they come in. And come so in. you're yeah. really well, not. Do, you're not about yeah. like, do you just wait until I fall asleep <laughs> right. to come in? They're and doing their job. Me and, but right. that's the reality is that right. people are in and out constantly and you're not getting a good night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So you talked about occasionally you do have empty beds. Mm-hmm. So how do people connect with you? How do they find you? I mean, after, you know, all of our listeners here, you'll be overwhelmed. <laughs> but. <laughs> No, but how do people connect with you, whether you have somebody that's out there and they're like, okay, well, I know I'm about to start a procedure. I know I'm going to be going in for X, Y, and Z. How, you know, even if you can be proactive about it, how can people connect with you? Um, most of our people are referred through a social worker or okay. hospital staff, um, but more and more people are, are finding out online. And so they're Googling cheap places to stay in Atlanta while I have somebody in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we pop up as one of those options for people. Are people able to plan ahead? So like if Mm -hmm. you know, so like if I know I have to do a procedure or whatever Mm -hmm. and I say, well, when, and it's not emergency, but something that I may want to be able to time, Mm -hmm. can people reach out to say, well, when are you, Yep. When are you guys free? Can I go ahead and prearrange for something in April? Or Yeah, and that takes a huge weight off of people's shoulders because 
Um, every other hospitality house, there's a few others. So there's the Ronald McDonald House. Um, there's the Hope House, which works with those with cancer patients. The Mason Lodge, which is those for um, transplant patients. We're the only one that takes reservations. And oh, okay. so the rest of them are on a first come, first serve. Mm-hmm. And so they can, our guests can reserve a year out in advance if they know they're coming in for these treatments and they don't have to worry about where they're going to stay. That's yeah. great to yeah. know. Yeah. Is that would be, so that would be, and that's on your website? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, it makes sense if you're going to, dr- if you live 40 miles away, you can't wait till you get there to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> but if you know that if you know you're having yeah. a person. But if you have chemo yeah. treatments, you know when your treatments, treatments are. They're every yes, they're whatever scheduled. day on this day and you can That's plan right. for that. And Atlanta is scary to navigate. Mm-hmm. And if you aren't wise, you end up in a bad part of Atlanta that sure. you don't want to be in. Mm-hmm. And so, especially for somebody that's coming in from a rural area that is not used to our traffic, used to our roads, it's just very overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so the question of the day, I think for me is how is all this funded? So obviously the dollar a day, he probably, you know, you, 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 got, you got that, that taken care of. But the other parts of it, the food mm-hmm. and, you know, the electricity and there's utilities and then there's, you know, the bedding. And all, I mean, there's I uh, there's a whole host of things. Cleaning that, has yes. to be a big deal if you've got mm-hmm. people there who are sick. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, yeah. Tell us how, <laughs> how do you do it. <laughs> how do you do it? Well, actually, we got we had like a minute left. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we are a social enterprise. So, about 50% of our budget mm. comes from guest fees. And the rest is what we're raising through donors, through grants, through um, trying to get creative. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, it's interesting. But we do have that little chunk that comes in from our guest fees that we're able to use. Yeah. Well, um, so, definitely... Um, donations are um, welcome and accepted and people can do that off your website? Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should we give them the website address? Yeah. Yeah. The website is (laughs) www.atlhhh.org. Right. Lots of H's. H's. <laughs> Just remember, uh, like if they Googled, uh, well, I don't know. You might not no, want to Google no, that. No, don't, 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 I promise. I'm going to send you down Yes. ATLHHH.org. Yes. Thank you so much, Melissa, for coming by. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for the work that you're doing, too. Thank you, guys. It's been an honor to be here. You're listening to The Good Work Show. To learn more about the show and how your company can tell their story, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Good Work Show. All right. Well, that was a great show. We thank um, Adrian and Melissa for coming on the show and um, sharing with us about their organizations. Yeah, two great organizations doing really um, important work. And, you know, I think it was really important, though, that um, Melissa talked about the fact that you can make reservations. Mm Mm-hmm at um, the hospitality house. Yes. Um, mostly because you never know. Well, some things are surprises, but other things you can plan out. And if mm-hmm. you can take that off the table of being something that you have to worry about, yeah. that would be a huge relief, I would imagine. Yeah. Especially, like, if you're coming and you have, like, a difficult pregnancy, you know you have to have, like, a C-section um, or some any whatever you or have. Treat, or ongoing treatment. treatments. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, that bookable part is really good. And I'm glad that they're working in a space where they can pick up and partner with um, Ronald McDonald House and and Hope House and some of the others um, that specialize in other things so that they can all exist. Um, But the need, like she said, outweighs what they can, definitely the resources that they have. So if anybody has another home or facility. Yeah, I was going to say, you got a house that you want to. Yeah, I'm (laughs) sure there's some tax benefit to that. I I mean, if you're not living in it. Yeah. You just have, it's just a second house. If you're just extra wealthy, you know. Extra wealthy? Yeah. Or wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. What you just extra, extra wealthy? wealthy? I don't know. Hmm. But anyway, um, if you have an extra house, you could donate to either one of those organizations, by the way. Yeah, actually you could. It could, it could be uh, a shelter for homeless or it could be um, a hospitality house for people in the hospital. I often think about what I would do with my house if I did win the lottery. Like, would I ever go back to it? No. I don't, I don't think you should. I think you would. Know, I think all that stuff would be like, eh. I think like I would that too. ficus. <laughs> the ficus could stay. <laughs> if, well, yeah, but see, like, the lady left you the, the ficus, ficus in the yeah. piano. I think you would just leave all the stuff. I think. Because she, she didn't need it. Right. Obviously, or didn't want to move it. And. What was she going to do? I mean, she probably like moved on up like the Jefferson. So right. when you move on up, you leave all, all that, that behind. Stuff. There's, of course, the sentimental stuff. But even like, yeah, 
because I mean, I feel like I, I win the lottery, out. I would like get my stuff set up and then I would check into a really nice hotel someplace and just stay there until I figured out where I wanted to be. Because at that point, when you have nothing but options, who's playing house music? I don't know. <laughs> but it's kind of loud. It's like, like I mean, all of a sudden we were in a rave. I know. Uh, you, I don't like, think you can hear it, audience, but all of a sudden it was my mind went to something else. I was like, <laughs> like the lights are going <laughs> <laughs> to um, But no, but it is like all, you have all the options. So like yes, you, you could, could live do it wherever you, you could you live want. anywhere that you wanted to in the city. So then you're like, okay, well, I in know. In the city? Well, I'm in the flying, world. I'm flying but the that's coupe the of thing. the United States. Well, I, that's I will the thing. never be a United States citizen. If I win the lottery really? that much money, I'm going overseas. But where? It doesn't matter. And if I knew, I would not tell anybody on the air right now because I don't no, want that's anybody finding like, me. I used to think, so like Bora, when I lived Bora here. or somewhere. Mm, when I lived in D.C., I was I would always think about this. I'm like, I would just assume at some point I would go back to Florida because I didn't want to be in the cold. So I'm like, I know I don't want to live anywhere cold. Yeah, you could live anywhere So then tropical. I realized, I was like, would I just go to my parents' house until no. I figured it out? Come like, on. you just don't know what she would do. I'm like, I would be the person who's at, well, that's, the, that's that rich lady. She comes to <laughs> Sam's every day to get a hot dog. dog. <laughs> that's the, that's the millionaire. <laughs> right. Everybody in Sam's gets a hot dog today. Uh, exactly. <laughs> if you like the hot dog fairy at Sam's after right, I won the like lottery. Right, like the person who, um, the, you know, the, the Christmas fairies yes. who go and, like, pay and give people money. Like, like you pay off their, well, the their, uh, not the, um, the layaway. Yeah. Like, I've been buying hot dogs for, I don't know, I'm like, I really don't know where. I don't where. think Florida's far enough, Trenise. Like, no, you know how I'm many people I you know stay, in Florida? I'm not saying I would stay there permanently, but, like, while I was trying to figure out what do I to, want my life move, to you be. To, you have to move really quickly because what i want to set up a foundation like what would i do with you can come back for that see that's why i'm saying i'm i'm you just once go. i get my lawyer um I, I might get a lawyer when i when i leave because i'm just i don't want I'd anybody wanna, following here's what me. i would do though i would establish residency in a state in the united states like florida that doesn't have a state income that's tax about, seems like that might be fraud though once no you, not if i buy a house like I would reestablish my Florida residency so I don't have to pay state income taxes. But if you don't live in the state, why but you But I would pay? live in the state. That's what I'm saying. I would establish oh, a residency okay. in Florida. Because here's the thing. You know, After you got your winnings, of course, because they're going to take it. They, they take them 40% in yeah, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know how much they take. Well, how much I, should they ask, take? I should ask Gretchen. Right. However much they take. But that's the thing. Like, I would want to make sure. So whatever dividends, are, anything that was coming in. Yeah. I would want to make sure that my residency was such a place. That's why all the golfers live in Florida. Because they live the in. Like golfers who don't like oh, golfers. Golfers, you don't I was have like, to. Who are the golfers? <laughs> These people I know, <laughs> the rich people at Sam's. The rich people I know, the rich people at Sam's. Man, I'm telling you, Sam's. You might not know who you're standing next to at Sam's. You never know. You never know. There's could, a the, yeah. There's a lot of rich people in Florida. I'm sure. This is not far enough for me. I'm sorry. No, people I mean, will find me, and I need to be. In, I'm going to be in some country See, that doesn't even thing. have a name. I don't have problems and I'll just, at all telling people no. So like that's There's too many people though. Somebody is gonna be like, I don't oh, answer and then, the phone. You're gonna come into it, and there's gonna be this guy, and you're gonna think he's Prince Charming or whatever, and then you're gonna get married, and then he's and then fall in love, and then he's gonna say, oh, we don't need no prenup, and then <laughs> telling you have that's just, how all the have movies we go. just met. <laughs> What that's part like, of does I'm any part of you. that sound likely? I'm telling you, because you know I'm good. You're, on your pa- guard will be down. You know I'm good rich. on paperwork. <laughs> no, but you know I'm really big on paperwork. <laughs> your guard like, will be down when you're rich, and you'll feel like, oh, even no. if I don't like him, I can just buy another guy, and then that's I'm saying <laughs> you can just go get another one. So I'm saying you got to get away from you got to get away from Florida man. This sounds like the beginning of 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> like that. I've never seen that show though. <laughs> is it? Is this? Is that it, how it feels goes? like no. It's the ni- so ninety day fiance is when the people come here, but then the other one is ninety day fiance the other way when the Americans move to the foreign country. Oh, and then they marry. They I think with if, somebody I think there. If you win the lottery, just know if you are not married at this time, you will married. never get married. <laughs> like this, just, just we could have single. a really great time, but we would never sign That's any right. sort there of legal. No, there'd be no legal framework around this relationship. No, and we'd have the, to. First of all, you wouldn't even live in the same space because there's no, no common law happening. We're not going to stop. There's no anything. They there won't even lot buy of, a 
joint hot dog. <laughs> no. It's like, what? Are we going? You get your hot dog. My 150 is my 150. Your 150 is your 150. We're going halfsies on this, right? Yeah. No, but see, then I also feel like, though, that really, sh- that sh- it makes your pool short. Because... It makes your what? Your pool short? Your pool small. Uh, um, because I want a pool bigger than Kanye's. <laughs> no, because here's the thing. So if you did that, if that was I'm your... I'm sorry. Has anybody, do you know what to talk about? Yes. Okay. No, I don't. You didn't get that? Oh, my gosh. No. Wow. They all got it. I didn't get it. I um, got it. Now, now I feel like... That's this okay. Is, Somebody else out there got it. They I, did. They did. DJ Khaled. Okay. Oh, yeah. Anyway. That's um... It. Okay. No, but like if you're if your whole thing is that you're going have these, then you have to find somebody that can like roll with you. So because another lottery winner? Somebody else, because here's the thing, like if you don't want to have to bankroll the whole situation. No, you don't uh uh-uh. uh. They never that's should what know I, you're rich. But that's what I'm saying. So then you have to live below your means. Below your but but how far below five hundred million point, dollars? You can do have you multiple own? personalities and multiple identities because so when you're alone, you're like, yes, oh. you're right. <laughs> you have your rich side and then, and then you have your popper side. <laughs> At the hot sounds, dog stand, <laughs> you're the popper side. I don't. I mean, at that point, that is the true case of I can do better by myself. Why? Because what's the point you of can't hanging live like? But why would you want to hang out with somebody that you have to be at the hot dog stand? But quite honestly, by myself. No, I'm saying that. I'm just saying, like you might, you might not go to the hot dog. Like you might go to a nice have- restaurant, but you're not gonna buy the restaurant with that guy because you don't need no. them to know that you that you can but, do that. But if if the whole thing is that you have to, that there has to be like an equality to the situation, Who then you there is equal. If you don't want him to know anything, then you can only do what to only get to the level that he's able to get to. Wait, say um. So okay, like, if okay, I have, give me an explanation. So we have five. I have five million, five hundred million dollars sitting in the bank. Well, what? How many? Five, <laughs> what a whole lot of money. Okay, but he doesn't know. We got two minutes. He on just this. thinks you're good, right? Okay, but see, he's got a good job. You want to go on vacation? He's yes. like, all right, cool. Where do you want to go? We're going halvesies. So you can oh, no, own, no, but we're not going half. That's the thing. No, but you not buy yours is Dutch right. treat. It is Dutch treat. Okay, but you can only go as nice as he can afford. Oh, I but see what you're saying. But you can afford saying. a whole lot better. But he's like, I guess we're going to Jamaica, and you're yeah. like, well, dang, I kind of wanted to go to just that vacation. Once you get off of that one, you go on your, you be like, but oh, well, I'm going to stay a few extra days, <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, so, and then you, and then you move out of that hotel but and that's you go the to the point. one that you bought. That's where I'm like, what's, yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, this was a great show. This is a way to kick we off the new year. We should go buy some lottery tickets. We really should <laughs> because go buy lottery tickets. Apparently, we have I'm great ideas. I'm going to speak it into existence that 2020 is going to be the year I win the lottery. And then, just forget before, yes, just for, don't forget. <laughs> what? You just said you're going to leave the country and not tell anybody. I didn't say I wasn't going to send money back. Did you not? I didn't I did, hear I that. I never said that. Can I we said roll the tape back? Because yeah. I didn't hear any I, of I that. I have witnesses. I never said I wasn't going to send You never said that you I, wouldn't. You never said that you would. I know, but, I mean, you know what my phone number is. Zell me. <laughs> <laughs> Just Could it. you imagine the Zell? They'd be like, um... You can only do 10000 a day, I think. Oh, well, that's enough. Yeah. Just every day, just send me 10000 yeah. I mean, $10,000 anyway. a day. I don't, I don't know how much you it know is. I, I, I think win there's the, a limit on it, though. I would win the Publishers Clearinghouse, that Steve Harvey one, that $5,000 oh, a week yeah. for the life. Yeah. I'd be happy with that. That's pretty good, though. That's pretty good. Without having to work for it? Yeah. I, I mean, I would do that one and tell people because at 5000 I like, you're not, I mean, you you're, could get extra stuff, but it's not like you got $350 million right off the bat. True. So that's different. Anywho. Anyway, well, thank you for tuning in to this week's Good Work Show. It was weird. We Yes. Know. It's a new decade. So welcome to the new decade. <laughs> <laughs> To learn more about the show and how your company can tell their story, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Good Work Show.